What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Manny here, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. It's time to talk about hangboarding again. Very recently I created an episode about when one should actually start hangboarding, in which I simply outlined some arguments regarding the necessity of this kind of training and I also shared my opinion about when it could be reasonable to start doing it regularly. So if you haven't watched that one yet, check it out before jumping into what I'm going to discuss in this episode, which is how you actually should start, in my opinion what you should actually do, um, what the material and a session could look like and with what kind of training frequency you could start out. As you know there's a million approaches to this subject, what you're gonna hear is merely my take on it and how I usually start out with my clients, so feel free to add your opinions and experiences down below, let's get started. Now first of all, what kind of training device should we use? There's a million hangboards out there to buy and on top of that there's always the option of building one your own, which is what I frequently did in the past and actually I'm working on a quite new setup during the making of this video, so I hope I can show you that one soon. So here's my first tip, keep it simple. As a beginner you really only need one big edge for warming up and one medium sized edge for training. Now what does that mean, big and medium, it can't mean basically anything, right? So in my book a big edge is anything above 25 millimeters. A medium edge would be below 25 millimeters but above 20 millimeters. And anything below 20 millimeters would I consider, I would consider as a small edge. And anything below 10 millimeters I call a very small edge. Keep in mind that these are completely arbitrary numbers which I derived from my personal experience and since we're staying in the beginner realm here, the small edges are none of our business anyway. Now when it comes to the material, I always recommend wooden edges with a good proper rounding, simply because it's gonna be the most skin preserving. To be more precise, I think the rounding of big and medium edges should have a radius of at least 0.5 centimeters and up to 1.5 centimeters actually. And in general, it can be said that the bigger the edge, the bigger the rounding has to be to be still comfortable. Whereas small and very small edges need to have quite small roundings to be still quite possible to hold on to, which is the main reason why these are usually not so skin friendly. This is also the main disadvantage of the device that I'm using in this video, otherwise an excellent portable hangboard called Fingershinder, which has these inserts to adjust the edge size from I think roughly 20 to 15 to 10 millimeters, which is perfect for me because I can use the medium edge for warming up and two various smaller edges for training. However, on the medium edge setting it's really noticeable that the rounding of this edge has to fit for the small edges as well, obviously and that means clearly too little rounding for the medium setting. Anyway, if you're interested in this thing, I'll put a link to their website in the description of this video. I think they have a bunch of cool stuff actually, and they are supporting Austrian um, local carpenters, so that's definitely something that I can promote with good grace. So there we have one advantage of having a good permanent setup. You can fit the rounding perfectly to each individual edge size. Buyable permanent wooden hangboards which get that right are those of the Beastmaker series for example. I'm sure you've seen those before, all wooden reasonable edge sizes with nice roundings and a couple of other stuff too to play around with. I personally am more a fan of the Beastmaker 2000 but the 1000 can be alright for beginners as well. So that's up for you to decide, again you can check them out in the description. And in case you have the time and decent woodcrafting skills, I can also recommend building your own setup, permanent or portable. I did both and it's usually a lot cheaper and quite fun actually. So now that you've got your wooden nicely rounded big and medium edges, what should you do with it? First of all, warm up properly. No need to stretch, just give your wrists and fingers and elbows and shoulders a little bit of mobilizing to prepare that stuff for the training. Then simply grab the big edge and do a couple of short hangs to get your fingers started and if you're getting warm you can also throw in the one or the other pull up to wake your upper body up a bit. Now grab your medium sized edge and do the same. Here I want to mention one more way to um, basically gate hangboard training to people who are actually ready for it. If you can't hold yourself with both hands on a medium sized edge solidly, which means like 3 seconds or more, 
you are usually not ready for hangboard training and you would definitely benefit more from spending more time just climbing. So now that you're warmed up, you can start working on different training grip types. You never trained on that stuff before, so again, keep it super simple. Start out with the half crimp grip and just hang as long as you can, hang basically on the medium sized edge. Stay active in your elbows and shoulders, slightly bent so that you don't wreck your inner structures with time. Now note your achieved hang time. Time to rest for about 2-3 to three minutes, again just keep it simple, listen to your body and try to rest as long as you need to be relatively fresh again for your next shot. Now pick the four fingers open grip, grab your medium edge again and simply hang as long as you can hang. Obviously you're going to need a stopwatch to do all that, so simply use your smartphone or whatever you have around. Using a stopwatch is key to make your results comparable. Counting doesn't work in a training situation, so really get one, you're going to need it sooner or later anyway. Now note the achieved hang time again, rest 2-3 to three minutes and do the same with the three fingers open grip. If you're unsure about grip types, check out my video about gripping technique. Don't forget about the slightly bent, active elbow and shoulders. And don't be afraid to really go to your limit when it comes to hang times, you want to make some gains here. So now you did one hang with each training grip type, remember to never train on any indoor edge or anything on the campus board, whatever you have, um, with the full crimp, okay? I discussed that already in my video about gripping technique, again, if you're unsure about that, please check it out. Two to three minutes rest and for your very first session you can simply repeat this pattern two more times and then you're done. Don't overdo it in the beginning. So we've got 9 hangs plus 8 resting times plus uh, mobilizing and warming up. That's around 45 minutes in total depending on how well you can hang already. So it's safe to say that such a session will never last longer than an hour. By the way, you will now also know your strongest and your weakest grip type. One more tip before we get into training frequency and difficulty adjustment. With a lot of bloody beginners I've made the experience that they have trouble keeping their gripping symmetric over the hanging duration. Pay attention to what your fingers are doing, don't fall into non-symmetric gripping. If you can't avoid it due to exhaustion, just simply stop the hang there. Now you completed your first session, you noted all your hanging and resting times. Next time you could simply repeat everything we talked about and maybe you'll make some improvements in your hanging times. Again, you're writing them down so you can compare them. Next time you could add an additional fourth round of hangs to your session to increase the intensity a bit. Still, the whole session shouldn't take longer than an hour in total. Then do that for two sessions. You've made some improvements again, so now you could start experimenting with pull-ups. Simply try to do as many pull-ups back-to-back as you can on the medium edge on all different grip types for one round of the session and note your results. Next time make two of the four rounds pull-up rounds and note the results again. Still making quick gains? Well then start experimenting with a smaller edge or a little bit of bonus weight maybe. And that's basically how you work your way up from there until you're eventually strong enough to try your first repeaters. Which I've also made plenty of videos about in case you want to check them out. So how often should you train? What should the frequency look like? I'd say simply start out once a week, from there you can quite quickly go up to 1.5 times a week, meaning 3 times every 2 weeks, and eventually you might end up at 2 times a week or something, if you really want to make gains and you're injury free and stuff. And you can't get enough other climbing in. Again, I would never um, prioritize a hangboard session over actual climbing. Speaking of which, in the beginning you should devote a day to your hangboard session, meaning no other training on that day, preferably after a rest day, but it could also be done the day after a training day if it wasn't too intense and always do a rest day in terms of climbing after a hangboard day. And that's basically it, that's one approach on how you could get started on the hangboard, that's basically my take on it. Um, again, there are a million opinions out there, so feel free to pick and choose. Um, please drop yours as well and your experiences down below as always. Um, drop a like if you've got something from the video, I'd highly appreciate it. And I think I'll say have a good training and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye!